Radio 4. 30 minute theatre. Jimmy Joel and Daddy Nichols in The Infamous Mr. Georgie by Gordon McCarran. Life begins when you're in love. You have the world before you. When you found the one, the only one to love and adore you. Well, not get any younger by doing that than us. I said, he heard what you said. Well then, I'm doing me faces. Very clever they are too. Pity nobody else thought so. Nobody that counted. I always thought well of them. They made me laugh. Strange what they'll do for money. But I weren't really star. You were just my straight man. Your jokes may for the expressions. He said use it word funny advisedly. It was me, act. They clap me. Put it on my act. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd, I'd like to let you into a little secret. No, no, no. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I want to tell you something. Very economical on water he is in his house. Here, here, here. His wife, his wife is so fat, you should see her. Huge. When she's in bath, there's no room for anyone, eh? <laughs> ah, but uh, Mr. Georgie. She is very, uh, very clean. She uses a lot of soap. Oh no, she'd never get out again otherwise. Ah, oh. oh, there's where it is. Do you realize, in retiring two years' time, I gather it's a common problem amongst men of 63. Nobody laid down the rules that people in the theater had to retire at 65. What a benevolent world that is. At 40 they stop booking thee, and at 65 you crossed off the Christmas card list. <laughs> hey, aren't they good to football match? He can't get tickets. I'll tell you what old lad. That can come round to our house and watch it on telly. He thought your wife didn't dig football. Oh, that's all right. She always goes out on her Saturdays. Where does she go? To wrestling. To the wrestling. I didn't know she liked it. Oh, I. Last week she won. Smudge? Come to mommy, Smudge. Ah, oh, there's a good girl. Ah, oh, Dindins is ready, so let's see your paws. Now, what have we here? Oh, come to the sink. Let Mummy clean them for you. <laughs> there. There, a proper little lady, don't we look now? There. Here, for being such a good girl, is a lovely dinner. Living and baking with just a little bit of kidney. Your favourite. Guess what darling Mummy has for you for afters? Can you guess? Yes, it's Chalky Drops. <laughs> Who's a lucky smudge then? Who's a lucky thing? Yeah. Now I've got to get Daddy's lunch. Daddy's upstairs in the attic talking to that dreadful Mr. Georgie. You don't like Mr. Georgie, do you, Petal? No, of course you don't. He's vulgar and he always makes unkind jokes about your mummy, doesn't he? Oh, that liver and bacon does look scrumptious. Doesn't Mummy always cook it just the way you like it with your special sauce? Mm. Oh, time to lay the table. You and me have never liked him. We put up with his nasty manners for a long time. I had it even before you were born, when they were still in show business, much. Even then, Mr. Georgie used to make unpleasant jokes about me. Mr. Georgie and Trevor, all the way from Croydon, it would say. They never made it big. Trevor blamed it on bad management. I blamed it on bad jokes. When they gave the whole thing up, I thought that was it. But no, that creature's been living with us ever since. Ah, Daddy's lunch is ready. Trevor, it's on the table. 
And now, my little darling, it's time for your chocolate drops. What do you say? What do you say to mummy? Yeah. yeah. Hark! The Island of Vaudevilles. Beastly dog. She'd be throwing chocolate drops across the kitchen for her to catch. I don't know how you put up with that blessed animal. She looks after her so much better than she does they. A dog's life for Trevor, a husband's life for Smudge. Keeps Medge happy, I suppose. She has done for me all these years. She's done for me, he says. Do right. Through thick and thin. More of a thin and less of a thick. She's starving, the old lad. Now, now if I were to get rid of that there dog, he couldn't. She'd go to pieces. So will thee if I don't get some proper food soon. Think about it, old lad. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, that, no. Listen. Do you know, his wife, his wife, is such a bad and unhygienic cook. She lays table, knife, fork, stomach fork. <laughs> Ah, oh, she does love her chocky drops. Disgusting how much she feeds that animal. She's not an animal. She's smart, don't you, Petal? Have you never heard of dog food? You know, it comes in tins like spaghetti you've given me. Oh, no. Smudge could never eat anything out of a tin. How would you like it if I served you dog food out of a tin? Might make a change for spaghetti. Don't try and be funny, Trevor. It doesn't suit you. Strange. It's what my audience used to say. Feed men never get the laughs. Hmm. Come to think of it, retired feed men don't even get fed. Oh, must it make those disgusting noises? She enjoyed her new sauce. Cordon blue, was it? Now, Trevor, that's Mr. Geordie. He's been putting words into your mouth. I can speak for myself, thank you. And anyway, it's my stomach that's been putting words into my mouth. And I don't mean alphabetical spaghetti. That is Mr. Geordie speaking. You know, Trevor, there are times when I think you are going senile. You're no longer a ventil... ventril... Ventril... er... Uh, quist. And you never learnt how to keep your lips closed when you spoke. They were working on it. Yes, you've been working on it for 20 years. Do you still talk to that dummy of yours as though you were a real person? If Smudge isn't an animal, Mr. Georgie is not a dummy. That dog left to go. It's me or her, Trevor. Now that is pointless. All this really doesn't concern you. Not concern me, he says. Not concern me, he says. I'll have thee know I've been stuck in this attic for seven years. And dost thou know why? A new way. I know, but don't interrupt Flo. I've been stuck in this attic for seven years. Ever since that wretched little monster arrived on scene. She only had it a week and already it had attacked me twice. Hey, Trevor, come here. How long do dogs live? He don't know. About 14 years, he suppose. So my sentence has another seven years to run. Unless, Trevor, that does something about it. What could he do? Take it for a walk. Lose it. Drop it in the washing machine. Tread on it. I don't know and I don't care. Only just do it. It will have to be carefully planned. And it won't be just for me. The nose. Oh, no. Think of all them cordon blue saucers that could be having. Well, any ideas? What for? Doing in dog. Murdering mongrel. In short, smudging smudge. That's what for. But what about my wife? Madge. Madge. Oh, no. That's illegal. No, no, no. Too risky. What is she going to say? Oh, she'll be very upset, of course. But she won't know it with thee if that does it right. I'm not sure that I could do it at all. Seven years in a damp, dark attic. Look, I've got mildew in my trousers. I'm sure there's woodworm in my head. I get a tickle every time I think. That is not fair. I keep you very clean. I look after you. Tell me, Trevor. 
Why did you and Madge never have any kids? Don't run too far, sweetheart. Smudgy? Here, Smudgy. Smudgy, here. Ah, you want to do a plopsy, I can tell. You want to do a plopsy. Do it right on the grass here, where it's comfortable. There. That's a lot better, isn't it? Look, we can sit here. Watch the little children on the swings and the slides. Just a moment, madam. What? Haven't you seen the signs? Oh, well, my doggy has to do her business somewhere. It is a public park. Oh, I was referring, madam, to the sign saying wet paint. You oh. nearly ruined your nice coat. Oh, oh thank you. Ah, oh, I'll mention it, sign. <laughs> Don't you worry yourself about your dog, madam. I've got a dog myself. A corgi. Ah. Yeah. And as you say, they have to uh, go wee-wee somewhere. It is a public park. Oh, I wish yeah. they were all like you. Ah, thank you, madam. Hey, you rotten kids! Stop that skylarking! What do you think this is? An aerodrome? That seat over there hasn't been painted on. Come on, smudge. Mm. Mummy isn't as young as she was, darling. She has to have a little rest. Yeah. Then it's nice to get out of the house and away from Mr. Georgie. You don't like him either. No. Don't like him poking fun at your mummy. Remember when you attacked Mr. Georgie when you were tiny? <laughs> Good girl. Oh, look, here's a lovely stick. Fetch. Fetch, smudge, fetch. Oh, poor darling, mummy's coming. Look at it. Just look at it. <laughs> Why, Mr. Georgie, what's wrong? What's wrong, is it? What? A sad case. Tragic. Look at me, son, when I'm talking to you. Shall I tell him, son? Shall I? Poor old Trevor's only got three weeks to live. He has. After that, his wife comes back from my mother's. <laughs> oh, we're soaked. Oh, oh, and look at your poor little hat and coat. You took your time. Especially in this weather. We've been to the vet. Oh, I was so worried when Smudge heard the thunder. She ran off and jumped in the boating pool, didn't you, love? Drenched you were. I was afraid she'd catch cold, so I rushed around to the surgery. I've got some pills. They think she'll be all right. Mm. That damn roof sprung a leak again. There was water pouring through all over Mr. Georgie. Get off. He was soaked. I put him in the oven to dry out. Well, he can't stay there. I've got smudgy supper to get. What a performance. She must be the only animal in the world who gets three big meals a day and can't blanch on the chocolate drop. She needs her little snacks. Aww. The snacks I can put up with. It's the banquets I can't stick. Mind off the stairs. I'm taking smudge up to the bathroom to dry her off. Answer the door. And leave smudgy's pills alone. Doggy friend, the aspirin cold cure for the little bundle of fun in your life. Coming, coming. Oh, Trevor, thank goodness you're in. Gerald, can I reserve judgment on that? Uh, let me in, please. I'm soaked. Well, don't stand there dripping on the doorstep. Come, come in and drip on the carpet. Oh. Oh, it's so good to have friends like you to turn to at a time like this. It's been a frightful day. Well, uh, come through and sit down. Oh. Now, what's wrong? I know she's she locked you out. No. She's hit you with a Wedgwood vial. No. She's trying to poison you with aspirin for dogs. Trevor, she's left me. Oh, not again. She means it. This is serious. What am I to do? Who is it? 
Oh, it's you, Gerald. What are you doing here? Oh, Madge, dear heart. Wonderful, wonderful. What, what good friends you are. Oh, don't tell me she's locked you out. No. She's hit you with that awful Wedgwood bar. Tell Madge she's left you. Madge, she's left me. Oh, not again. And tell her, apparently, she means it this time. Oh, she does, she does. No, tell her that. Tell Madge. She means it, Madge. Gerald, tell Trevor to get you a drink. A little scotch? A, a very large scotch, if I may. No, tell him that. Sorry? Tell Trevor. Uh, uh, Trevor? Oh, Trevor, yes. A very large scotch, please. Make that extra large. Perhaps you should tell Madge we're out of scotch. No, it's me who wanted it. But she offered you. She did? Oh, yes, she, she did, yes, yes. Um, yes. Uh, look, am I right when something in my bones tells me all is not ace material here, either? Wouldn't know. Ask Madge. Madge? Um, things gliding smooth, are they? What's he been saying? Oh, uh, nothing, no, no, it's just that, uh... <clears throat> well, um, anything under the weather. Only smudge. Oh, and, and Mr. Georgie. Yeah, who? Oh, yes, them. Mm. And Trevor. And Madge. What? Were you? Oh, no, surely. I mean, well, I mean, that that's what I was asking. Have you, uh, got a large gin and tonic instead? Hmm? <clears throat> Well, any problems on that score, you could leave out the tonic. All the sherry? You know, I really envy you two. Why the envy? Ah. <laughs> Why? Why the envy? Don't speak to him like that. Don't tell me not to speak to him like that when you've just spoken to him like that. I didn't say it in the same tone of voice. My tone of voice was nicer than her tone of voice, wasn't it, Gerald? Yes. Uh, no, I... Oh. I envy you two for not having kids. That was a brilliant move. Yes. You see, our serenity was shattered. Right from when I collected her and little Patty from the nursing home. And then shattered all over again when I did the same thing for her and little Jerry. And again through Millie and Terry and Charlie and Jenny and Donnie and Dick. You see, as they grew up, we would never take the same sides. And it's become so ground into us, we can't give it up. So you see how lucky you two are. Two people in their autumnal years, but still with so much in common. That's why I said I envied you. Um, is that your phone? Yes, yes, I, I, I think it is. Uh, uh, hello? Yes? Who? Good heavens. It's for you. Who? You. Who? Her. Good heavens. Uh, yes. Yes, it's me, dear. I bet you put Gerald what? up to this. Up to what? Oh, that, About uh, us being well, lucky. No, of I did not. Look, the man's in well, trouble. Guys, needing you. help. All you do is bicker. You're his friend? You're his friend. How oh, dare you say I'm his friend? Who invited him in? Tell Goodbye. me that. Goodbye. Oh, what friends. You see, I've only to spend a moment with you and all's resolved. What happened? She has. Where? At home. She's waiting for me. Oh, the darling. Look, you see, the sun is out and a rainbow. Right and out of thank you. Thank you. Such help, my friend. Such help. And thanks for the drink. But you didn't give her the drink. You didn't, you mean? You offered. But who didn't have any? I had some, but not for him. That's no way to treat a guest. Uh, you told me off for letting him in. I don't like him in the house. Well, I was happy to see him until you started giving him my booze. It's my booze, too. You don't drink. But it's still my booze, too. When you're married, you're supposed to share things. A marriage means togetherness. Your dog won't let me near you. And your bet vent your dummy won't let me near you. Mr. Georgie. Forget him for once while I'm talking to you. I have, for far too long. He's still in the oven. Smudge, where's Smudge? Georgie, Georgie, Georgie. Smudgy. Oh, Georgie, Smudgy. Georgie. Smudgy. I'm sorry. Oh, Trevor, what's that done to me? Oh my God, Georgie, I'm ruined, Trevor. Look, uh, let me get you out. You, you'll be fine. Lie, just lie on the table here. You'll be all right. You'll be fine. I'm going, Trevor. I can feel it. Me wig is all, all sizzled up. My claws are charred. I know, Trevor. Me face, me face, it's melted. Mr. Georgie, my lifelong friend, what have I done? Mr. Georgie, put in a pie. 
expect in oven until he were dry. And dry humour was never my forty, Trevor. Not but stand-up gags. Look, I... I could try and repair your face. You'd be like new. Too late for that. Too far gone. This is the end, Trevor. Why? Why don't thou make things up? Imagine Snudge when I've, I'm gone, eh? Tell them... Tell them I didn't mean all I said. Them they jokes. It were only a way to make a living. Once. Oh, all comics do it, don't they, Trevor? Yes. Yes, they do. It's a strange thing being a dummy. The only real life I was allowed finish when we left business. I couldn't duck out and go into the civil service until I was 65. So, strictly speaking, I'm already dead. But still, we've had some good times since then, haven't we? Mr. Georgie, an hour ago you were sopping wet. And now look at you. Had what you might describe as a burning thirst. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Not a gentleman's in sight, and I'm fit to bust. Look, stop it, please. Remember our rule? If it's a bad audience, Trevor, and they won't laugh, then do all laughing for them. And beat a quick exit. That way, manager will think someone thought you were funny. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> bye bye, Trevor. That's been a wonderful audience, old lad. Best a chap could ask for. What have you done with my smudge? Eh, what are you talking? Mr. George is dead. You let her out, didn't you, just to spite me? How cruel. She's got no road sense. She must be frightened to death for the bypass and these huge lorries. And if she steps out in front of one. Oh, my poor little smudge. How could I have let her out? I was with you and Gerald all the time. Here, come here, come here. Just look, look, look at Mr. Georgie. Good riddance, I say. Perhaps that'll put a stop to all those vulgar jokes about me, all that pestering. Pestering, pestering, she said. Mr. Georgie has spent the last seven years in that attic thanks to your ruddy dog. How, how can you call that pestering? I could hear you talking to him and making him reply, telling those jokes. Uh, and he kept you from me for a lot more than seven years. He was a true friend. My only friend. And now look at him. And I want to I tell have lost else. real flesh and blood, a living thing. At least I pray she still is. All you can do is to cry over a lump of burnt wood. A reject from a jumble sale. Just you come here. Don't you ever speak about Mr. Georgie ever again like that. Do you understand? Ever! We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can take nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord Auntie, taketh away. Are you, darling? Blessed be the name Could of the go, Lord. Come along, sweetheart, wherever you are. Could you, could you go? Cheerio, Mr. Georgie. My jaw foot. Oh, are you awake? Of course I'm awake. How can I sleep when my poor little girl is out there somewhere, lost and scared and cold and pining for her mummy? Life has to go on as normal. Don't think I shall ever speak to you again. In that case, life will go on as normal. You let smudge out. Oh, dear. How many more times? I tell you, I had nothing to do with it. No matter how much I would have liked to. So, you admit you wanted to get rid of her? Well, of course I do. You know that perfectly well. And don't tell me it didn't cross your mind to turn up the regular on the oven when you heard who was inside. <laughs> Perhaps. But I didn't, did I? Because Gerald came. And I couldn't do anything about Smudge for the same reason. You had her up in the bathroom. Look. Mr. George is gone. Smudge is gone. We... We should try and show each other a, a little sympathy. I'm the one who needs sympathy. <laughs> How can you laugh? Don't you see? Ever since those two disappeared out of our lives this afternoon, we have talked more than we've done for, for years and years and years. Before it was, it was an epic bicker. Dogs have no sense of direction. And I took her collar off when I was drying her. 
Madge, if you didn't find Smudge... Uh, no, no, no. Just supposing you didn't. We... we could try. Have a go, you know, at, at, at talking to each other. What about? Well, I, I, I don't know anything. We could... Uh, we should practice. Look, you start. I'll have to get another dog. Oh, thanks very much. I can't just pop round the corner and buy another Mr. Georgie. Good job, too. <sighs> what a happy couple. Wedded bliss at last. Even if it is a few decades too late. So who's counting? Oh, shut up. Madge Livingston, listen to the voice you haven't heard for over five hours. Yes, it is your old friend, Mr. Georgie. Madge Livingston... Dog lover extraordinaire, this is your Tommy. Oh, Trevor, stop it, stop it. Mr. George is dead. That's what you thought. But no, he's here tonight. Come in, Mr. George. Don't, Trevor, please. None of my doing. Although I buried him this afternoon, it would seem that Mr. George is alive and kicking. Kicking I am. Alive, I'm working on. No, oh, I don't believe it. Ventriloquist dummies have personalities. Why can't they have ghosts? Cheat, you cheat. I can't bring little smudgy back like that. Cheat. <laughs> no, no, it can't be. My little smudge isn't dead. Hey, sounds like she's going from the attic. I'll bet you she thinks Mr. George is up there. Hey, what time is it, quick? Uh, 20, 20 past 12. It's my little one. It's Smudge. How do you know? She always goes wee-wees at this time of night. I'm coming! I'm coming! <laughs> we thought she were up in heaven. And all time, she were playing through it in rafters. Sniffing for me, no doubt. Well, if she is alive, it's going to be like old times again. No, quite old lad. You have forgotten the little matter of my earthly form. Head, legs, arms, bodies. You know, sort of thing. Summit to get about in. I could, I could dig you up and repair you. Dr. Livingstone, I exhume. Not a good idea. I could build you from scratch. Hey, that's a good idea. That's what I'll do. It will be almost like yesterday. Or even this morning. But I didn't really have much say in how I looked the last time. So what I want is this here. My nose must be more noble. Roman even. And my hair, chestnut. With a few waves round ears. Blue eyes. And a new me. He's going to have a better sense of dress. <laughs> hey, no, 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 listen, here. Go, come here, come here. No, Mrs. Listen, listen. Did I know? Did I know that while Trevor here was a small lad? He knew when he grew up, he wanted to be a great ventriloquist. Well, he got halfway there. He grew up. <laughs> Hey, don't wish to know that. Kindly leave the stage. If you knew what I've been through, you would know why I ask you, have you ever been lonely? Have you ever been blue? In the infamous Mr. Georgie by Gordon McCarrow, Trevor and Mr. Georgie were played by Jimmy Joel. Madge, Dandy Nichols, Smudge and the park keeper, Leonard Fenton, and Gerald, Manning Wilson. The play was directed by Peter King.